part four of our how to ask for support and why it's harder with ADHD series. We're too exhausted to ask for help. This is not a subject that Brittany and I know anything about at all. So let's get to <laughs> empathy. So yeah, it's like, wow, I am putting my pants on three legs at a time. That's a weird metaphor, but I am so tired that it's, I need the help to get less tired, but wow, does it feel like I don't have enough energy to get it? Yeah. I One feel like we've talked in the other, in the other ones about like why it takes more energy for us with ADHD um, yep. to ask for help. Like one is like figuring out what we even need and getting out of burden decisive, but also like the rejection sensitivity yep. part of it um, means it yep. actually requires more willpower for us to ask for help than somebody without ADHD. Yep, for sure. The one of the big problems in this area is that although it feels awful and it sometimes feels even like I can't, I don't even have the spoons or the energy to ask for help to get more spoons or more energy, it can be a downward spiral, even so. Um, and sometimes it's like, well, I'm going to have to sacrifice the, what it feels like there is nothing to sacrifice to get just a tiny bit of momentum to get something else to, and I, I, I don't want to preach to anybody, but I have been in that position where I thought, wow, I just don't even have the energy to do my dishes ever. And, you know, depression plays a role. Anxiety plays a role in there. That's a whole therapy thing too. But saying, despite all of this, I'm going to take a chance and use my few spoons that I do have, my little energy that I do have to see that therapist and take a chance with that coach to see. And for me, that helped me get up to the point where I do have the spoons to ask for support, but it's, it's almost oxymoronic. It's almost contradictory, but it can have a downward spiral. What do you think? Brittany? Oh, I mean, it's, it's like, I don't know. It's like automation a little bit, like, because a thing yeah. is happening without my direct input. Um, but it requires setup. Like I have to set up all of my automations. Mm -hmm. Um, if I'm asking for help with somebody like posting our videos and our blog posts, I have to set that up for that person to use it. And, and it's, it's legitimately difficult to prioritize it. I, I do have to be bought in that like, this means I don't have to do those other things, right? Like that means I don't have to do this manually anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and and it is easier said than done, but like yeah. we can ask for one piece at a time. It doesn't have to be asked for all the help or none of it. Like yes. if we can just get a little bit more of a foothold by like, Hey, I, I know dishes are like my job. If, if you could help me with them today and I'm going to get like this other thing, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. one little thing that we can dig in so that we can like start building up and start yes. building up to things that are better, that will save our energy in the long run. If I don't have the energy to ask for all the help, if I can just do one piece right now, mm -hmm. that will help me later get to another spot and then another mm -hmm. spot. And that can sometimes feel like a gamble, but try one thing, see where it goes. And then if that was not the thing, try the next thing. Just it doesn't matter if it's slow. It does not matter Incremental. if it's slow. Yeah. Incremental improvements are still improvements mm -hmm. and I feel like we do get very impatient and it's mm. oh, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that except like the real improvements they are incremental they're not all yes. at once yes yeah anything that seems too good to be true is turns out <laughs> yes um yes so so and, and hmm? oh I was just I was gonna say it doesn't have to be perfect like yes. you don't have to ask for the perfect way like fine tuning yep. can happen later, like yep. just getting, and, and it is like a thing that we can practice, like that we will get better at it as we practice yes. it a bit more. The and, first time is always will, the hardest. It will be slightly easier yeah. every single time. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, uh, and, and hopefully, especially with your asking for help from a specific person, like a system is, is harder, but like, Overall, if you come to a therapist or, 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 you know, your professor or, or whatever, or even your spouse and say, 
I don't know. I know that I need help. That's it. That's all I got today. Can you work with me? Professor, what supports do you offer your students? Therapist, what uh, methods of therapy do you offer? What questions can we go over together? Determine what the heck is going on with me that I actually need. Hopefully they yeah. will be able to meet you halfway, more than halfway, if they are if they are very proficient in their area. Yeah, well, and, and even if it's that, and we talked about this in our like bad coaching topics video, um, they're not bad, they're just at a different level. And what we're gonna do is try to help you turn that into a thing we can help with, right? Yes. Like help, help you define it. So we're hoping yeah. whoever you're asking will be able to help you figure that out too. We really are that exhausted. We also may need to find a way to start prioritizing our self-care like sleep. And maybe that is the place to ask for help first yes. is, is in getting those things that our brain and body need to be working their optimal best. Yep. That's what I say to clients a ton of the time. It's like, especially clients who have a lot of different topics they want to work on. It's like, okay, which ones of these unlock others? Where is their bottleneck? Or furthermore, where is the like point of the pyramid that gets down to, so sleep will help a ton of things. Exercise will help a ton of things. You know, laundry not being in the way will help a ton of things. Therefore, those are the places to focus rather than I probably should have a different haircut for my dog. Dog important, haircut important, absolutely. Sleep first. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so what about like our whole system, like our, our cultural system of support? You know, the medical system, insurance, academic, like what about self-advocacy in those areas? Is that easy? Yeah, definitely. No, no, in no way. <laughs> that is, that's a whole thing. We had a member of the guild who worked in insurance and said to Amazing. us, people who work in insurance don't understand it. Like this, these are vast, complex systems that- and they're very boring, very boring, which makes it very boring. hard to focus on. And in certain cases, like they're very interested in classifying and when, if I ever write my autobiography, it is going to be called other, please specify because myself and many other people who are ADHD, neurodiverse, et cetera, fall under that thing where you don't have a neat little category you fall under. You have to explain yourself over and over and over again. Even my profession, there isn't a tax code for me to file for my business in Canada. My mom had to sort of not make one up, but sort of find the reasonable facsimile one for me. It's the case. Yeah. So being weird, being unusual, being out of the box is hard and communicating around that is even harder. Yeah. And, and those types of things in and of themselves are incredibly exhausting. Yep. Um, so, so where should I start if I'm really exhausted, but I have to deal with one of those things? Start with Start with the smallest bite you can possibly think of. Whatever, the, the thing I say to clients is what is the first point of contact? For me, often when I write down tasks for things, originally I'll write down, you know, deal with this tax thing, whatever. But the very, very, very first point of contact, find my wallet because it's got the information, the password in it that I use to sign into that. And you see where I'm going with this, but that's the first thing. So if you sit down at your computer and go, Oh, my wallet's downstairs. I'll I'll peace out. I'll be like, eh, no, I don't want to. But if I'm if I'm already downstairs, I think, oh, I have I have five minutes. I could sign into that website. Oh, my wallet's right there. That's my first thing. Start at the smallest thing you can possibly think of and focus on that. And don't think about the rest of the thing. And if even if you just get your wallet upstairs next to your computer and you don't sign in yet, fine. That's the incremental stuff you did today. Well done. Yeah. And, and starting with whatever support you do have, like, is it ADHD Twitter or, you know, our ADHD guild, or just like a friend who can give you enough to like, maybe what you need as a coach to tackle the other things. So give you enough to like, help you find a coach and then yep. like, and then the coach can help you like with the next thing yep. and like, and, and maybe even that jump is too big. Like, 
what what do we need to get to this phase so that we can then get to this phase so that we can get then get to this phase and mm -hmm. at the top is thriving but maybe it's several steps away many sometimes it's many especially if somebody feels lots like they're on lots. rock bottom there are so many steps and progress is not linear progress up and down right but just like okay i'm gonna look up one website tomorrow yeah who do you need to ask that that point of contact gets done and they support yeah. you in whatever capacity they have as a friend or whatever to get that to, to happen. And, and yeah. And sometimes it's like somebody to sit with you. Like I'm going to go get coffee with this person already. Hey friend, can I, can you just sit there quietly while I make the call to my insurance so I can get a therapist or whatever it may be. Yes. Um, and like, those tiny, tiny steps, don't forget to like celebrate them because yeah. they are a step on your path. And when we yeah. don't give ourselves permission to ever celebrate those, which we don't very often by our natural selves, um, having those, we need to start feeling a sense of accomplishment to be able to do more stuff. Yes. And I feel like there's sort of an opposite desire of like, no, wait till you've accomplished all the things. No, no, no. Each little thing, like have someone to brag to that like, yeah. hey, I made that phone call. Yeah. Um, I, I have a client that we started talking about. It wasn't like urgent therapy. It was just like, Hey, at some point I should have someone to talk to about these things. It doesn't have to be right now, but like, I was like, okay, so we've made it, even though we've these other major coaching topics each week, he does one step, right? Mm, yeah. Love so, that. Hey, yep. like you wrote to one of them. Awesome. Yeah. Um, you're not quite sure you want to go with them. Okay. So what's next? Is it writing to one more? Um, yep. and make sure each one of those steps gets celebrated because these yep. things aren't easy. They're hard and boring. Like really dealing yes. with any institution is kind of awful and very yes. anti-ADHD. So yes. whatever celebration, whatever support you need to get through it, yep. that's the level of support like to get because it's and another, so exhausting. It is. Another thing that can make it exhausting too, is when you do make those incremental steps, if you hear yourself think, um, oh, you only did a tiny step. What's wrong with you? You, you should do it all. You blah, 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 yeah. or whatever. Comparing yourself. And I've had many people tell me that voice in their head sounds like one of their parents, which, ooh, let's not unpack that right now. But there's a voice sometimes that says, what's wrong with you? And berates you for doing a small step when you should be, should, when it would be more beneficial to you to celebrate it instead of beating yourself up. So be aware of that. And, but again, fighting that voice can also be exhausting, but if you can choose the celebration, choose the victory, because small steps are scientifically proven to be more effective than doing big change all at once. Big change all at once, even if you are neurotypical, is way more likely to fail. Yes. Yes. Usually when Ooh. I use the word silence, Brittany goes, well, but I think that's unequivocal <laughs> what I just said. I, we need the small steps. We need to feel like we can celebrate them and tell that other voice to, you know, F right off. Um, <laughs> yep. um, we need to feel like we can celebrate them, like, and we need to have them out of the way, right? Like we need to get yep. our list shorter. Yep. And, and so seeing those things, being able to visualize them can really help. And then. And then asking for whatever is the right level. Yep. All right. Yep. Thanks for cool. joining us on Too Exhausted to Ask for Help, a part of our series on how to ask for support when we need it and why it's harder with ADHD. And we'll see you next time.